you are welcome to today's video lesson with bright edo in today's lesson i'll be answering various chemistry questions that cut across different topics in chemistry now if you are just joining this community and you haven't subscribed yet to this channel do well to click the subscribe button so that you don't miss out for other video lessons to be posted so let's get into the first question which says a catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction by providing a path that so first of all we have to know what the catalyst as a word is all about you know catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction you can see the word catalyst it what increases the rate of a chemical reaction how a reaction will go that is what the catalyst increase but the point here is this if this place what was not chemical and this place was biological this word catalyst will change to a term called enzymes so you can see here that enzymes and catalysts they look the same they perform same function but they are used differently in various contexts so if i was teaching biology now i'll call uh, 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 i'll call this place biological reaction so here will be called what enzymes so enzymes increases the rate of what a biological reaction but in chemistry now we use the word catalyst so now they said a catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction by providing a path now this must be noted whenever a catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction it increases the rate of that reaction and decreases something and what it decreases is what we call activation energy this must be noted i believe now you can see the answer on the board so when a catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction it reduces what we call activation energy so the question here will now be what is activation energy activation energy is the minimum energy required for colliding particle to overcome first before any reaction can take place so let's say a plus b is to react so if a and b is reacting and it overcomes what we call activation energy this reaction will take place so let's for instance we now say a plus b will give us a, will give us a b so the point here is this 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 particular uh, uh two substances okay to be precise element but they are unknown now so when they react and they overcome activation energy that reaction will take place so activation energy is the minimum energy required for colliding particle to overcome first before that reaction will take place so it must be noted here that when a catalyst increases the rate of a chemical reaction it decreases activation energy now to be specific the type of catalyst that does this function is the positive catalyst because we have various ways we can classify a catalyst we have classification of catalyst based on the positive catalyst and negative catalyst so from the word negative it decreases the rate of a chemical reaction so when a negative uh, or catalyst from the word negative it decreases the rate of a chemical reaction what will happen to this it will increase activation energy and vice versa so that's how it works it is not difficult so moving further to question number two now you can see that this question is a calculation question and they are asking us to calculate what solubility now you can see here that solubility it must be noted that solubility can be expressed in various units we have expressing solubility in what we call mole per dm cube expressing solubility in what, in what we call grams per dm cube g this slash m is per dm cube and expressing solubility in grams per 100 grams of water now this must be noted it must be noted here that you can see all the units to which we express solubility. I already have video lessons that explains all the concept on solubility. So you go check that video lesson out so that you can master this aspect properly because questions from this aspect normally comes out in the jam examination. So you have to take note of this. It is very, very important. So the point here is this. You can see as earlier said that we have various ways to which we express solubility and this solubility now express it has various formulas to be applied in each cases so the point here is this you can see that the question says calculate solubility in what 
moles per dm cube. There is a formula to be applied. And what is the formula? This is the formula. I'm going to write it down so that we can solve this question together. So according to the question, calculate what? Solubility in moles per dm cube. Now to calculate solubility in moles per dm cube, this must be noted. We use a formula which is mass, mass times, I'm going to leave this part over, I'm, I'm coming here back, over molar mass times volume. Now, this must be noted. It must be noted here that, let's say the volume is in question was given to be cm cube. If the volume in the question is given to be cm cube, you add 1,000 to your formula. This must be noted. But if the volume in the question was given to be dm cube, you don't put 1,000. You leave here blank. This must be noted. It is very, very important for your conversion. When you are solving questions on this aspect, you have to be careful. When the volume given is in cm cube, as seen here, what are we to add? 1,000 to the formula. If the volume was in dm cube, we remove what? 1,000. And I already have video lessons that explains all this concept. And the compound given in this question was CaCO3 because we need it to calculate our molar mass. Now, what are the elements involved forming this compound? There are three, copper, sulfur, and oxygen. And what are their atomic masses? Copper atomic mass is 64. Sulfur atom atomic mass is 22. And oxygen atomic mass is 16. You will be given in your exam question. But in your exam, okay? But knowing this, con uh, uh, this atomic masses in your cerebrum is very, very important. You already know that the cerebrum is the active part of the brain that is responsible for controlling intelligence. So that must be noted. So moving further, let's calculate the molar mass of this compound, CaCO3. So let's do that. Molar mass will not be equal to, you know, a CaCO3 we are calculating for. So let's solve. What's the atomic mass of copper? 64. Plus what's the atomic mass of sulfur? for? 32. Plus what's the atomic mass of oxygen? 16. And we have four atoms of oxygen. That's why I said times four. So this 64 plus 32 plus 64 what we hit this, I think we're having 160 grams per mole, okay? So we are having molar mass of this compound to be what? 160 grams per mole. You already know that the uh, SI unit to which we express molar mass is what? Grams per mole. So let's solve together. Because all the parameters are complete in the question. So solubility in moles per dm cube will now be equal to what's our mass? The mass given in the question was 40 grams. So know your mass, you see your grams here. So it was 40 grams times what we are adding 1000 because the volume was the same cube times 1000 over what's the molar mass 160 grams per mole times what's our volume 100 cm cube so let's hit our calculator to get an answer so 40 times 100 divided by 160 times 100 sorry 40 times a thousand so let's do this we are having the solubility of this compound to be 2.5 moles per dm cube. Make sure as you watch this video lesson, make sure you are with your calculator and your writing materials to jot out these questions because they are very important for the jam exam. So in the look of things, we have 2.5 moles per dm cube. What becomes our answer? Option B, which is 2.5 moles per dm cube. So you can see how questions like this have been solved without stress. So with all this said, let's quickly go over to the next practice question okay guys moving further to the next practice question which says which of the following substance is a double salt now you can see the compounds here that makes up this option so which will be your answer it is very easy now to answer this question you need to know what a double salt is and let me quickly explain that a double salt is a compound okay that ionizes to form two cations and one anion i recap a double salt is a compound to that ionizes to form two cations and how many anion one anion now the point here is this what is a cation a cation is simply a positively charged atom well an anion is simply a negatively charged atom so the point here is this so in a double sort you will see two cations and one anion and most times you see your water of crystallization which is the h2o attached to the compound that's one easy way to identify a double sort 
Do you get? So in the look of things, the answer to this question is option C. Because earlier said, I said you see water of crystallization. Okay, I believe you can see it here. H2O, but to be specific here, 12 H2O. Now, let me quickly explain these two cations and one anion that must be seen in the compound. You know, cations, basically, they are formed by metals. So, metals forms cation, whereby non-metals forms an ion. So, the point here is this. Let's go into this particular uh, 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 compound to get at our anions and cations. Now, you can see the first element I can see here. What's the element called? Potassium. Is potassium a metal? Yes, potassium is a metal with a positive charge. So, that's one anion. Sorry. So, that's one cation. Potassium is a metal. It is positive charge. So, it's what? One cation. So, let's go over to the next. Wow, this is aluminium. Aluminium also is a metal, okay? And it is another cation. But to be specific, how many cations can you see? two cations are you getting me now so moving further this all together is a radical and this radical is so4 two minus okay radicals they are also ions but they are group of atoms that form an ion are you getting me now so this is a radical so4 two minus radical and it is called the sulfate radical so in the look of things, is it not negatively charged as earlier said? Yes. So it is one anion also, but to be specific, it is a radical. Are you getting the point? So the point here is this. A double salt is a compound that ionizes or forms two cations and one anion. So you can see it is option C. So you can see how it works. So moving further to so, uh, the other options, they are all type of salt, but they are different, okay? Because for this, which is sodium chloride, it is a normal salt. Do you get it is a normal salt? Now for option B, which is NaH2PO4, now, whenever a compound, a salt to be precise, has hydrogen atom attached, that salt is basically called an acidic salt. This must be noted because hydrogen accounts for acidity of a compound. So, these are, as earlier said, is what? A normal salt. So, moving further to, this is a double salt, okay? This is a double salt. Whereby, moving over to option D. Option D is a basic salt. Why is it a basic salt? It, it has the OH, okay? It has the OH group called the hydroxide ion, okay? It's called what? The hydroxide ion. So if I was in organic chemistry, this OH will be called the hydroxyl, okay? Not the hydroxide ion. But since I'm in inorganic chemistry, it's called the hydroxide ion, and it is a basic salt because it has the OH as earlier said though we have reactions to explain all this but knowing this now is going to help you in the jam examination so moving over to question number four which says which of the following gases is used in oxyacetylene flame so which of the following gas is used in manufacture of this flame now it must be noted that the gas that performs this function is oxygen gas and this uh, flame basically is also used in cutting metals. Okay, it's used for cutting metals. Are you getting me now? So, oxyacetylene flame is for cutting metal and it is done by the uh, by oxygen gas. Okay, oxygen gas produces this. Now, this oxygen gas is also needed in hospitals, okay, to resuscitate patients. Do you get oxygen gas is also needed in the what? Hospitals. So, this must be noted so you can see how all this works so with all this said let's quickly go over to the next practice question okay guys moving further let's go into this question number five which is the last practice question for this video lesson now if you haven't subscribed yet to this channel do well to click the subscribe button and also give this video a like so that other persons can have the opportunity to see these lessons and learn what you are learning because it's very important okay for your examination so now the question says a proton donor is called now this must be noted proton donor they are called acids okay whereby what does it mean it means that acids donate okay proton that is what it means now this must be noted this proton that acids donate is in the form of an ion called hydrogen ion so let's take an example this is an acid hcl 
And when I dissociate this as what am I having? H plus and Cl minus. What's this H plus called? As earlier said, hydrogen ion. And what's this called? Chloride ion. So you can see what I just said. Acids donate proton. Acids, this is an acid. It what? Donates proton. It gives out proton. That means acids, they don't really, uh, not that they don't like pro protons, but they have it in excess, so they have to donate it. So the point here is this. Acids donate proton that is why they are called protons donor so this must be noted and the proton is in the form of which ion hydrogen ion okay guys so we've come to the end of this video lesson now if you find this video helpful do well to click the subscribe button to this channel and also share these lessons with your friends thanks for watching